<sighs> Sorry for being late here. Are there any questions before we begin? Oh, don't want that. All right, sorry for being late. Are there any questions before we begin? Today is October 10th, and we will be discussing Lab 3, Microscope Basics. Uh, you guys probably can't see my screen, can you? There we go. Many apologies for being late. Um, I just got tied up. Let's close that down. Oh, I didn't get it in time. All right, any questions before we begin? Have I shown this? Lab three is what we're gonna talk about today. What is that? I can close that. Close that too. All right, lab three, microscope basics. Uh, you need to read this lab module on the class textbook through chapter three in the section on uh, compound light microscopy. There are some video clips today. I think there is an online exercise also. You're not physically gonna be using a microscope, but upon completion of this lab module, you should be able to one, locate and name the parts of a compound light microscope, along with describing the function of these parts. Two, calculate the total magnification for each objective used. Uh, three, know the guidelines for focusing specimens with the different objectives. We have four different objective lenses called the scanning lens, the low power lens, the high power lens, and the oil immersion lens. I don't like using these words because the low power lens is not the lowest, the scanning is, and the high power is not the highest, 40X is not the highest. I prefer using the names 4X for the scanning lens, 10X for the low, X, uh, low power lens, 40X for the high power lens, and then 100X uh, for the uh, oil immersion lens. Any question about that? All right. And then uh, four, estimate the size of a specimen when seen at a different magnification power. Five, understand the rules for proper microscope care. And then six, be able to define the terms associated with the microscope. And the terms are given in this lab module as well as in the textbook. So you need to memorize the names and the functions of these parts of the microscope. One is the eyepiece, also called the ocular lens, and it is a magnification lens. Two is the objective lens, and it's on a rotating nose piece, so you can rotate which lens you're using. Three, that's the stage, and you put the slide that you're observing on the stage. Four is a stage clip, and that allows you to easily move the slide about under the microscope or under the lens. Five is the uh, levers for controlling the movement of the stage. Six, I don't see, there it is. Six is the uh, iris diaphragm. And seven is the uh, condenser lens. 
On some microscopes, the iris diaphragm will be below the condenser lens. On this one here, it's above. The iris diaphragm opens up the iris so that you can allow more light to come in and uh, you can have a cone of light. So it allows the light come up as a cone and you open it up and then you get a very big cone of light coming up and then you can shut it much like a camera shutter so that that cone of light can be essentially a pen prick, only allowing a very small cone of light to come up. And you need to adjust that when you're moving or rotating the objective lenses. And we'll talk more about that later. A seven is the uh, condenser, and it simply gives the light in a cone to come up from the lamp or light source to the specimen above. It doesn't adjust the size of it. That's the purpose of the iris diaphragm. But it is a lens, but it does not magnify. Any question about any of that? Okay, eight is the coarse focus adjustment, and it will raise or lower the stage at uh, uh, fairly large amounts. Uh, nine is the fine focus, and it will raise or lower the stage at very fine detail, at very low amount. 10 is the light switch that you turn on or off the lamp, the light. 11 is the rheostat. And in this lab, uh, apparently Australians don't use the term rheostat. They call it in this lab, the light intensity dial. And I like to call it the rheostat because it can turn up or down the intensity of the light like a rheostat. It doesn't turn off or on the light. And that's the switch there, the 10. And then 12 is the lamp, which is the light source for the microscope. Any question about any of that? So those are the parts above. You should note that when we have the rotating nose piece, we can change the objective lens that we're using. You can use the 4X lens, also called the scanning lens, and it has a, well, we'll talk about it later. You can switch it to the 10X lens, which is the low power lens, or the 40X lens or the high power. I don't like using those terms because students, every term get confused on what objective lens they mean when they say low power and high power. And then the 100X lens, which is the oil immersion lens. The total magnification is the objective lens magnification times the ocular lens magnification, meaning this is a compound microscope. We have two lenses that magnify, the objective lens and the ocular lens. All of our ocular lenses magnify 10x times. You can have a little more expensive microscope, which can magnify the uh, eyepiece by 20x, 20 times instead of 10 times. So the total magnification in our microscope for the 4x lens would then be 40x, because the total magnification is the magnification of the objective lens times the magnification of the ocular lens, or 4x times 10 is 40x. The total magnification of the 10x lens is 100x. The total magnification of the 40x lens is 400x. And then the 100x lens is 1000x. So the strongest our microscopes can magnify is 1000 times. This very best microscopes and the most expensive can mic uh, magnify 2,000 times. When we're talking about the depth of field, that is how much of an object you can see under the lens. 
with the 4x lens, hopefully you guys can see this, you can see uh, a very deep depth of field. You might be able to see both the top of the object and the bottom of the object. When you switch to the 10x lens, the size of the depth of field will decrease to something like half the size of the object. And then the 4x lens is smaller. And then the oil immersion lens is a very narrow depth of field where you can only see essentially one plane of the object. And you'll have to focus in on different planes of the object. The field of view is how much of the slide you can view with your eye under the microscope. And so if this is the slide, well, let me go something that's square. Maybe this will work. The slide here, the uh, 4X lens sees a very big or large field of view so that you could see maybe all of the slide or at least um, most of the slide in the field of view. The uh, field of view for the 10X lens is smaller, so it will be reduced from this size to let's say about half that. And then the high power of the 40X lens is even smaller. And then the uh, field of view for the oil immersion lens is much smaller, just like a pinprick or maybe a little bigger than a pinprick, but just a little bit. So for comments, the 4X lens is the easiest lens to use because you can focus in on the specimen in the largest depth of field. And it's also the easiest to use because it has the largest field of view. So if you're looking at a specimen on the slide, it'll be in the field of view. And then the oil immersion lens is the hardest one to use because you have to be focused exactly on the specimen that you're observing in order to see it. And then you have the smallest field of view. So of the entire slide, you can only see uh, a small amount of it. Any question about any of that? All right, there is a, a uh, formula for, uh, where the heck is that? I'm not seeing it here. I don't use the formula, but you can uh, determine the formula for what the the uh, size is. And I guess that's down in the next table, so I'll discuss it later. You should know that the when you view an object under the microscope, it is more than just magnified. It is also inverted and reversed. So the letter E right here will appear to be this shape under the microscope, magnified, but also inverted and reversed. Any question about any of that? All right, uh, this lab module is warning you that the iris diaphragm can be opened or closed, allowing more or less light through the stage. So it is right there the most important tool for adjusting the amount of light in the microscope. You can also adjust the amount of light coming into the microscope by turning up or down the rheostat. But more importantly, the iris diaphragm um, can increase the contrast between the specimen and the background of the slide, meaning the glass of the slide. And that will allow you to see the specimen better if you increase the contrast. And how you do that is by having the iris diaphragm open to the right amount. 
Uh, I'll talk about that, I guess, pretty soon. Uh, when you're first using the microscope, you should use the scanning 4X objective lens. Why? Because it has the greatest field of view. So you're more likely to see the specimen under the slide, under the field of view of the slide. And then it has the greatest depth of field. So you're more likely to see the object wherever you're focusing in on the object. You should then turn the light to the appropriate uh, volume so it's not hurting your eyes and it's a good enough light that you can see the specimen. And use the course focus adjustment knob to slowly raise the stage and bring the object into course focus. After you have it in course focus, you can then use the fine focus knob to bring it into fine focus. After this point, you should never use the course focus adjustment knob ever again because our microscopes are in parafocal vision, meaning that when you have one objective lens viewing the specimen, all of the objective lens should be focusing in on the specimen. And the most you should do is uh, simply use the fine focus to get the focus finely adjusted. So all other adjustments should only be using the fine focus. Then what you should do is move the specimen that you're observing into the center of your field of view. And then you can um, rotate the objective lens to the next higher objective lens, which in this case would be the 10X lens. Why you want to move the specimen into the center of your field of view is because the uh, 10X lens will have a smaller field of view and if you don't have it near the center, if it's off on the edge of the field of view with the 4X lens, and then you go to the 10X lens, you will not be able to see the specimen. So you bring it into the center of your field of view. You then repeat that step, meaning find focus, bring the object into the center of your field of view, you repeat the step nine whenever you switch to the next higher objective lens. When you switch from the 40X to the 100X lens, it's a little special because you need to add oil. The 100X lens is not any better at magnifying than the 40X lens without using oil. And there's no reason to use the 40X lens, or the, excuse me, the 100X lens without using oil because it doesn't magnify any better. And then you have a smaller field of view and a decreased depth of field. So you may as well stay with the 40X lens. You add oil to the oil immersion lens to improve the resolution of the oil immersion lens. And then you can um, view the specimen better with the 100X lens. Oil has the same refractive index as glass. We'll talk about that a little better. And that allows more light to be gathered by the objective lens because the oil decreases the amount of light that is lost in refraction. And we haven't talked about the refraction of light yet, but uh, refraction of light happens whenever light moves from one media through another media. So from going from the glass slide to the air, to the glass of the uh, objective lens, we're going to be having Uh, the refraction of light happening at the surface of the glass in the air. 
and then at the surface of the air and the glass, meaning at the surface of the glass and the slide and the air, and then the uh, surface of the air, and then the glass of the objective lens. Any question about any of that? So if you use oil, there will be no refraction of light. And that will greatly increase the resolution and the clarity of your image under the oil immersion lens. Whenever you use oil, it's very important to clean the oil off the microscope, obviously off the slide, but especially off the lens. And so every you use oil, you must clean the lens off the microscope. We'll talk more about that later. All right, any questions about any of that? Some troubleshooting. If you're having trouble focusing in on the specimen and it's not clear, it might be that oil has dried on the lens, either the 40X lens or the 100X lens, and you need to remove that oil. Before you'll get good uh, vision. Um, okay, so let's talk about the activities you're going to do in today's lab. You're not actually going to be doing any activity or working with a direct microscope. We do have a virtual microscope that you can work with uh, on the computer. Uh, but because you cannot work with a microscope, you can't do activity one. So we've done it for you and the table has been filled in. However, you are expected to know the information contained in the table and how we uh, got the measurements and how you can use the formula below in 0.5 to determine the size of an object that you're viewing under a uh, under an ejected lens. So with the 4x lens, the diameter of the field of view is 4.5 millimeters. We normally have our students measure that, but you can't do that because you don't have a microscope or you most likely do not have a microscope. That's the diameter in micrometers is 4,500. The 10X magnification lens has a diameter of 1.8 millimeters or 1,800 micrometers. The diameter of the 40X lens is uh, 0 0.45 millimeters across the field of view or 450 micrometers. And for the uh, oil immersion lens or the 100X magnification lens, it is uh, 0 0.18 millimeters or 180 micrometers. It is important to understand the size of your field of view for each objective lens, because if you know the size, you can then calculate the size of the specimen you are observing. For example, if you're using the 40X lens and the specimen is a fairly large specimen and it takes up half your field of view, then you know the size of that specimen is 225 micrometers or about. And that allows you to estimate the size of the specimen depending on the size of your field of view. For activity two, observing prepared slides, you cannot perform this activity because everything we do is going to be done online. However, you can do this activity or something similar by using the virtual exercise in the laboratory exercise uh, in this document. We expect you to know and understand the material in that exercise. So here we're going through activity two. Uh, observing prepared slides under the microscope. Uh, activity three, we're giving it to you, uh, how to make a wet mount. You're not going to be tested on that activity, but you probably should learn how to make a wet mount if you've never made a wet mount. 
So here it is here. You can read through how to make a wet mount. It's a very easy, quick, and natural way to view a specimen in its natural environment. Like if you have something from pond water, all you have to do is put a drop of the pond water on your slide and then view it in a wet mount. All right, this is uh, the steps for properly handling a microscope. You're not really gonna be handling a microscope in this class because everything is gonna be done online, but you are expected to know how to correctly store a microscope. When you're all done with your scope, you should lower the stage all the way, remove the slide and put it away. If you used oil on your, uh, on your scope, meaning you used oil with the oil immersion lens, then you need to wipe oil off the 100X objective lens. And you only wipe it off using lens paper. Do not use Kim wipes, paper towels, or any other paper product. Paper contains uh, wood fibers in it, and the wood fibers will scratch the lens, the glass of the lens. So only use lens paper. It is paper, but this paper has all of the wood fibers removed from it. Any question about any of that? Okay, so put the 4X objective in place, lower the light intensity to the minimum, switch the light to the off position, unplug the microscope, wrap the cord neatly around the base of the microscope, unscrew the, never mind, you guys don't do that. Always use both hands. When you're carrying the microscope, use one hand to carry the, uh, underneath the base of the microscope, and one hand to carry the microscope using the arm or the neck of the microscope. And then place the microscope back in the same cupboard that you got it from and place it in the same direction. Meaning, let's go like this way. If the microscope came out this way, it should be put in this way. All right, so know the terms of this lab. And then let's go to the laboratory exercises. We have a video clip on using the microscope. So view that clip. I think that's the same one. Yeah, and then we have a, a video clip for putting oil on the immersion lens. Uh, you need to watch that because when you're switching from the 4X objective to the 100X objective, what you wanna do is take the 40X and take it halfway out and bring, that'll make the 100X halfway in. It won't be over the specimen, it'll be halfway. And then that'll allow you to get in between the lenses to put in a drop of oil. And then we have a virtual microscope for you to practice on. Let me see if this will open. They moved this web page, so I'm not sure this link will work. On the worksheet, it looks like that link is working. I'm not sure on the lab module if that link has been updated or not. All right, there's the virtual microscope. This is a program running on your computer that will work like a microscope. What you wanna do is click explore. I mean, you can check the other stuff and get stuff done, but then view the slide box. And I'm gonna take a plant slide 
I'll take onion root slide, and that puts the slide on the microscope. And now there's the field of view with the onion root tip that you can see a little bit. Let's adjust the light a little bit. Maybe a little too much. And then focus on it using the font course focus until you get it in good focus, someplace around there. And then finally focus to get it in fine focus. Okay. It's already in the center of your field of view. But if it isn't in the center of the field of view, move it to the center. And then go to the next higher power objective lens. Click on this link there. And that rotates it. And there we have our object. And you can see it's pretty much in focus, but not quite. There's a little bit off. Let me see if I can find a cell going through a mitosis. I might have to go to the 40X lens to see that. Oh, there's probably one there. Let me go find focus. Maybe about there. Go to the 40X lens. Remember to move the, oh, it is there, right there. The object you want to see in the center of your field of view, because that would probably be out of the 100X field of view. So you got to move that in the center of your field of view. What we're looking at is chromosomes. This cell is uh, about to go un undergo mitosis. And so it's about to divide. And I just wanted to view chromosomes rather than the nucleus. And now let's go to the 100X lens. Remember with the 100X lens, you need to uh, add oil. So how you do that, there's the oil there. Take the oil and it doesn't show you, but you added oil. And then it's out of focus. So we have to do fine focus to get it in focus. And that's so far out of focus, I think I'm going to have to do the course focus a little bit, which normally you wouldn't do. No, nope, it's not going to do it. It didn't do any better. Let me see if I can find my specimen. I'm not finding it. Oh, there it is. Right there. And that's as close as I can get to the center of the field of view. It won't move this way further. Um, any questions about working with that microscope? Or virtual microscope? All right, let's remove the slide. And it tells you you need to clean the slide. So let's use lens paper. This will probably tell you that's wrong. This will be good for cleaning parts of the microscope that are not sensitive. Like you can clean the um, uh, stage with the chem wipe, but do not use chem wipe on the uh, glass slide. Use only lens paper on the lens and there it's showing you it's clean. And that put away the slide in there. And then it uh, put the 4X lens, objective lens in place. And now the microscope, once the stage is lowered, the light switch is, is uh, stage is lowered, the light switch is put off. This microscope is now ready to be put away. Let me warn you that if you use oil on your lens, the 100X lens, and then you remove the oil from the 100X lens, you should check the 40X lens to see if it has oil in it because the space between, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, the space between the 40X lens and the drop of oil is so slight that if you move the 40X lens around, just to go to another lens, not doesn't even have to use the 40X lens, that the 40X lens will go through the oil and pick up oil. 
So if you claim the 100X lens, you should check the 40X lens just in case it picked up oil. And if ever you move the 40X lens through the drop of oil, it will pick up oil, even if you don't view through the 40X lens. Any question about any of that? Dried oil on a microscope is difficult to remove. It will not come off with lens paper. We have a lens cleaner, which is a liquid solution for removing the oil. And generally in the lab, if somebody has a problem and needs to have the lens cleaned, I usually do it. Okay, so you don't need to learn how to clean the lens with the liquid lens cleaner. But you know what you need to do is clean it with the lens paper. And usually in an entire term, I only have to clean the lens once or twice the entire term. And that's at most. Sometimes if I'm lucky, I don't have to clean it any times. But don't allow the oil to clean, uh, dry on the lens. I'm not sure how it dries, but it takes at least several days because I found oil on the lenses, which was at least two days old. So two days is not, not enough time for the oil to dry. And it may be it requires a long time. I don't know. All right, that's it for the virtual lab. Then practice naming the parts of the microscope by using this link. Come on. This is sort of a game. What you need to do to start, it tells you right up there, press play, that's this button here. And now it's asking, where's the ocular lens? And then it's got these things you click on where it might be. I'm going to do it wrong incorrectly to show you. Um, it'll go boink like that if it's wrong. And if it's right, it'll show you green if it's the first time, <clears throat> yellow <clears throat> if it's the second time. And I think if you do it several times wrong, stage clip, let's do several times. I'm not going to get me to do that. All right, it'll go purple and tell you where the stage clip is. And because we missed it within three, it'll show you red. Now, resolving nose piece, if you do it correctly the first time, it'll be green. Any questions on how to use this? It'll allow you to practice naming the parts of the microscope. Come on. And the part is listed here, and you got to just click where it is. The power switch is, uh, is that it there? I can't even see what that is. Let me see if I can blow that up. Well, that's either the base. I don't see a switch there. So I'm going to guess that's the power switch, meaning this rheostat looks like you can turn it up higher but you can also turn it on and off. Yep, on this one, you can. So 14 must be the base. Stage is uh, blue. All right. Any questions on how to use this? And then for this lab, answer the questions for Question 4A, it says, when focusing a specimen, you should always start with the objective. So which objective should we use? 4B, when using the low power, high power, and oil immersion objectives, remember the low power is 10x, the high power is 40x, the oil immersion is 100x, only what focus adjustment knob should be used? And that's either coarse or fine focus. Uh, 4C, the type of microscope used in the lab is called what? And it has two names to it. Do not say a brand. 
like some of our microscopes are Nikon. That is not a type of microscope. That is a company that makes microscopes. Okay. And to get 4C correct, you have to have two words in there. The correct two words. Uh, four, excuse me, 4D, you should carry the microscope holding on to the something with one hand and by supporting the something with the other hand. 4E, the objectives are attached to this part of the microscope, which can be rotated to click different objective lenses in place. So name that part of the microscope. If a microscope had an ocular lens of 10x and a high power objective of 45 times, what would be the microscope's total magnification? Uh, 4G, when the stage is moved left, the image moved through the ocular moves in which direction? When the stage is moved forward, the image moved, the image viewed through the ocular moves in which direction? 4H, which objective lens provides the largest uh, FOV stands for field of view? Or I, which objective lens has the smallest field of view? Or J, of the methods for light adjustment, which is the most important on the microscope? And there really are two parts of the microscope which can adjust the amount of light you have. As long as you get one of those two, I'll give you the credit. A 4K, how large is the field of view when using the high power objective lens? You need to give a measurement. So don't say something like small, large. You need to give a measurement in either millimeters or micrometers. Two, suppose a typical bacteria cell is two micrometers in diameter. In the circle below, which represents the field of view, what you're seeing under the microscope, when the viewed using the oil immersion objective, state how many cells can fit across the circle under the oil immersion lens. So to get this question, you have to figure out what is the size of the field of view with the oil immersion lens? And then if each cell is two micrometers, tell me how many cells will fit across the uh, um, diameter of the field of view. Any question about that? All right, that's today's lab. It's almost 7.30. I'll be here till eight o'clock or until the last student logs out. I do not mind if you guys work together, but if you do work together, you should put the words in your own names. I know when you guys are working together and copying answers, because if somebody gets a strange wrong answer and other people have the same strong strange wrong answer, I know you guys are working together. And then I'll check to see if anyone has different answers. And I'm a little disappointed when you guys uh, have the same answers. So you should put the different, at least put the answers in your own wording. Okay. All right. Any question about any of that? Uh, you should never plagiarize, because if you do plagiarize, you'll get a zero on that assignment. All right, so get started on working on lab three. I will be here until eight o'clock or until the last student logs out. Oh, and if ever you have a question and you want to talk to me, if you don't mind it being public, we could do it at a time like this in the lab. Or if you want it private, I can wait until everybody else is logged out and then we can have the session uh, after the lab, after everybody else is logged out.
So uh, use the lab time. If you ever have a question, you want to ask it, uh, this is a good time to log in and ask the question. But remember, you want to log in early because once the last student logs out, I'm going to log out also. <laughs>